So this is a 58-year-old lady, uh, first presented to us in September this year for right lower limb DVT. And at that time, a preliminary ultrasound found a pelvic mass. So uh, later, we arranged an CT in October and shows that there is retroperitoneal tumor of 18.2 cm invading the uh, right part spinal, right source muscles, lower right kidney, and also right alexo. And also, it adopts uh, abdominal aorta, right common iliac artery, and encases the right internal and external iliac artery, IVC, right common iliac vein, and also right ureter. And uh, before uh, we proceed to planning for OT, we found that there is a left cervical lymph node, and FNAC found to be a malignant leoplasm. This patient developed GOO symptoms later in September this year, and the OGD uh, then found an extrinsic mass compressing on the D23 region. So this is a CT scan uh, outlining uh, the retroperitoneal uh, mass uh, in around the D23 region. So uh, we are going to do an OGD with a uh, duodeno stance. Uh. Um, Sydney, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, I've I've uh, sort of uh, done a little bit of work while you've been gone. Um, if you take a, a spot fluoro, do you um, do you have the fluoro image? Yes. The patient is on their uh, their left side. Uh, I think. You know, in, in, in maybe in my own unit, uh, we would intubate the patient, have them on their back uh, so that we can um, protect the airway in case there's any uh, residual in the stomach, but also uh, be able to get uh, maybe better x-ray um, uh, imaging. Uh, but as you can see here, the scope, uh, I'm in uh, sort of deep D2, uh, and uh, we cannulated the, um, the uh, stricture with a ball tip catheter. It's a catheter made by Cook uh, and uh, in combination with a soft tip guide wire, an 035 guide wire. Uh, you have to be very careful. It's a very friable, as you can see. And if you go poking uh, with something fairly sharp, uh, you can get dissection through the tumor uh, and that can, uh, uh, can, can make things more difficult. But I have gotten through the tumor uh, with a guide wire. Uh, it's very important when you're doing uh, duodenal stenting that you get plenty of guide wire beyond the stricture, uh, lots and lots of guide wire beyond the stricture. I then exchanged uh, for the, uh, the ball tip catheter and I now have a, a balloon tip uh, catheter. It's a stone extraction balloon. And I use it um, mainly to get an idea of where the stricture is and um, the length of the stricture. What size is your balloon? So the balloon goes up to 20. So you want something very, very large. You're in a small bowel. And uh, so you want something that will uh, hang up at the point of the stricture. You can see that I've injected some contrast in. And I'm in small, I have small bowel folds. Uh, which is important, uh, so I know that I'm in the lumen. Um, and so now I'm, I'm going to actually inflate the balloon uh, and then uh, ask uh, for contrast to be injected, and the wire needs to be advanced. So maybe uh, somebody can inject contrast, and then uh, I need the wire advanced, and the balloon is up, right? Okay. So um, go ahead and inject. So you can see the balloon, and I'm advancing the wire. You can see the contrast. I'm pulling back. I'm pulling back. And right there uh, is where I get resistance. So, so your balloon is, is actually beyond the stricture, right? Say again? Your, be your, 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 your balloon is beyond the stricture. Exactly. So, right. so um, you're just using the balloon to uh, gauge the length and the resistance of the, of the stricture and so on. Exactly. So you can see the tip of my scope. You should be able to see the balloon moving. Yes, we can see uh, it. And the tip of my scope um, is not actually at the level of the stricture. So right. the stricture actually is, is really quite short. But that's not the issue. Um, uh, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that you, <coughs> you, you want to... Uh, it's a principle of taking curves. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave a stent, the end of the stent, right at the angle of a curve. So if this is the, uh, can you hold that? Yeah. Just, uh, hopefully it won't. 
potential. So if this is the, the bowel uh, and, the, and the stricture, say, is here, you don't want to leave the end of the stent right at the uh, junction of the curve. You actually have to take the curve uh, in order to get a uh, reasonable flow of, of food. So even despite uh, very short strictures, uh, usually you use um, a nine centimeter long stent. So uh, what I'm gonna do uh, is actually ad advance the balloon. So if you can fluoro, and maybe let the balloon down now just a little bit, uh, let it down. Okay, and uh, pull in the wire so I can, can go. So there's the curve that I think I need to take, uh, Sydney. It's uh, sort of yep. in, the, in the hook of the scope. So at, now advance the wire and I'm gonna pull back. And there's the stricture, so. And how many centimeters would that be now? So it's, uh, it's actually probably about 12 centimeters the stent that we're going to use, I don't have available uh, to me, uh, Sydney. It's a partially covered stent, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, a fully covered stent will migrate. A partially covered stent uh, hopefully won't migrate, and you won't get the tumor ingrowth. So, so I'm going to show this stent. Yes, yes please. So uh, this is a partially covered stent. Um, uncovered portion is the um, flange area. So this is a flanged area, so it actually helps to uh, approximate to the normal mucosa, and actually all this uncovered portion will become embedded in the mucosa, and um, the uncovered portion is distal to the flange. So in our experience for uh, gastric allo obstruction, the, unco uh, the covered portion really prevents uh, all the tumor in growth, and actually uh, in the past we always worried about covering of the papilla with the uh, covered portion, but actually I don't think we have observed uh, many patients uh, suffering from a, a, a cold soft pilo uh, papilla because of the covered uh, membrane. So right now we're using these type of stents for the uh, gastric allo obstruction. And uh, in this patient, we're gonna put in uh, this stent. I think the 10, uh, the 10 centimeter. 10 centimeter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I asked uh, uh, Anthony, uh, one option would have been to go down and, and with a side viewing scope to begin with to get an idea of where the ampulla is. Uh, I think the ampulla is there at nine o'clock, um, Sydney. Uh, mm. But I will try to deploy this uh, distal uh, to that area. So the balloon is down. Uh, let the balloon down and we're gonna go ahead and do an exchange. I have an 035 wire, uh, Sydney. Uh, so I want something that's got reasonable uh, stiffness to it. Uh, obviously, um, Unlike the ERCP scope, I don't have as good a grabbing of the, mm. uh, of the uh, wire uh, with this scope, although I see that it does have an elevator. So this is a scope that I, again, don't have in, in my unit. So uh, you can go floral off now. We've got the exchange. Excuse me, Rob. Yep. It's Luke here. Hi, Luke. Hey. Do you want to ask a question? We, we were, we were, in the presentation, we were told this was extrinsic pathology. Yes. Are, are you concerned that placement of a stent may migrate because, it, because it's extrinsic? Yeah. yeah, so I think migration in the small bowel is a, is a huge issue, Luke. Uh, and that's why I, you know, I, I talked to Anthony beforehand. Again, in the United States, we only have uh, uncovered stents uh, available to us uh, for uh, use in the duodenum. And again, that's uh, because to prevent migration. But um, this one is, is not only flanged, so it's got a, a, a wider uh, uh, bevel at, in, in the proximal end here, uh, but it also is partially covered. So uh, Anthony tells me that these uh, tend not to migrate, uh, and I think uh, there is benefit to, uh, to partially covering uh, the stent uh, to avoid uh, ingrowth and re-intervention. So it's not uncommon for us, for our duodenal patients to get uh, tissue ingrowth and then before, uh, and then they ha we have to re-intervene. Okay. Thank you. So I think just now intraluminally you are seeing some tumor, right? So although yes. it's extrinsic, but I think it's invading it's, it's eroded. Yeah, it's, inside no the question. lumen. So. Okay, so I'm advancing this stent and one thing that I would say 
uh, is that the stent is nice and flexible. So even with all that looping in the, in the scope, you can still pass the stand out. That's very good. So this is 10 centimeters long? Yes. Oh, wow. OK. Well, that doesn't look like 10 centimeters long, does uh, yeah, it? Yeah, so uh, I just asked Anthony, I just asked the nurses, uh, that doesn't look anywhere near like it's 10 centimeters long. It doesn't um, look as if it's long enough to uh, negotiate those uh, two curves you were telling right. me about. Right, uh, so. Something's not right here, Anthony. Um, so, so Rob, maybe we change to another room okay. and uh, come back to you okay. after you have changed the After you have changed the stand, yes. yeah. I'll wait to deploy uh, before you, for you guys to come yeah. back. Okay. Hi, Rob. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so I've I've um, sort of adjusted the scope. We've changed to a longer stent, uh, and now um, we'll go ahead and deploy this. If you can see the uh, junction between sort of the gray area and what turns out to sort of be the white area, I'm told is a junction of the stent. Uh, I've made the curve, uh, and I'm going to be short of the second curve if you look on fluoro. Mm -hmm. So I think we're ready to go ahead and deploy. Uh, I think uh, Anthony is, is here with me. He's comfortable with the proximal end of this stent if we keep it where it is. Yeah. Uh, Maybe just a little bit more towards you, sir. Yeah. So Anthony is constantly making him come more toward me. So um, uh, we'll because, compromise um, there. Yeah. So okay. there's a two centimeter uncovered portion. Yeah. So um, it's not like the way we used to uh, put a duodenal stent. Right. Uh, so we want the uncovered portion away from the tumor and the covered portion at, uh, at the tumor level. Okay. So we're going to start deploying, Sydney. So if you look on fluoro. So you're not going to have the distal portion beyond that curve as uh, originally intended. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, um, I'm not quite sure the, the measurements and so forth are off, yeah. but it's a, yeah, I would need a very long stand. Yeah, the, probably the stand would not be long enough. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we are deploying, but because of all the curves in the scope, yeah. I think it's going in very slowly. But it is going in, I think. I'm sort of shaking a little bit to try to, to help. Yeah, I think the nurses are feeling very tight. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Wait. Stop. Okay. stop. Okay. Just okay. It just popped out. I think the same. Did it? Yeah. Okay. okay. So slowly. Okay. So maybe change the angle just a little bit. I think it's okay. I okay. Think it's okay. Okay. Keep, keep, okay. Deploy. Okay. Ah, there it's it moves. Moving. Do you see it moving? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We can see it's moving. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Slowly, slowly moving. Slowly, slowly, step yeah. by step. Yes, step by step. Sort of like uh, taking out the tumors in the esophagus, step by step. <laughs> <laughs> it's popping out a little bit. Yep, you can see it popping out at the end. It's like covered up a little bit. But you can see it uh, unfurling here. Step by step, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yep. You can see deploying. the distal is deploying, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. You can see it now, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just sort of shaking a little bit to, to, to try, try to help with the. Yeah. With the, 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 the abrupt turn is going to make it difficult to deploy, so I think Rob yep. is uh, demonstrating some tricks. I'm sort of okay. sitting on the air, so I'm trying to maybe, uh, is the air okay? I'll try to open that, just one second, uh, stop, stop, stop. So I can't see the end, I'm trying to put some air in. Uh, there we go, okay, now I can see okay. it. Okay, yes, we okay. can see, we can yep. see, yep. yes. Yep, 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 Nice. Yep, so I'm keeping this as close as I can to me to make uh, Anthony happy. Yep, thank you. It's all about Anthony. No, 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 so. it's all about you. Okay, okay here we go. I think it's close to coming uh, now. So very importantly at this end, uh, you need to see the metal parts so that to make sure the stand is in the right position. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. The opening. So there's obviously considerable angulation to this as well. So. Yeah. 
But uh, here it's, uh, I think it's almost done. You, it feels like forever, huh? Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. Step by step. Take your time. Ah, okay. Very good. So, let me see if I can get down uh, just a little bit. I assume, Anthony, this is probably not adjustable um, at no, this point. Um, no. not, not now. <laughs> I'm going to have to come back uh, in the stomach. Uh, you can see that her stomach is quite uh, uh, big. Uh, so I'm going to have to decompress the stomach a little bit in order to have enough scope. We were talking before the case began. Uh, Anthony was wondering whether or not uh, this 2T scope would be long enough, and uh, it, was, it, 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 would, it, it got sort of close to the tumor, but didn't uh, certainly, uh, I couldn't touch it. Um, it yeah. does appear on fluoroscopy that the proximal extent of the stand is collapsed. Makes you worry a little bit, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, well, we'll take a look at it. It may be the angle. Oh, sorry. So, uh, Rock, we're back, back with you. Okay, so I'm struggling. Uh, so as you said, uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the stent uh, deployed within tumor. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it was jumped. I'm not sure if my scope went in further than, um, than I had expected, uh, but uh, the bottom line is, is that the, the end of the, if you're looking at the fluoro, you can see that uh, the stent to the right is obviously fully deployed and the stent, uh, uh, the proximal edge is, uh, is in the tumor. Yeah. So uh, this is unacceptable. Uh, I need to, to open this up. The problem is, is that now this scrunch down stent within the, the tumor is incredibly hard to get uh, sort of end on, if you will, uh, directly into the end. So that's what I'm struggling with now. So and what's we'll your... What's your plan once you are able to get So we're going to, to deploy stent. a second stent, uh, yeah. a short yeah. uh, four centimeter long stent, uh, obviously and with, um, uh, with uh, the, the uncovered part uh, appropriately placed. So Rob, uh, does, does the stent have a lasso in the proximal? Say end? again? The, you, some, some stents have a lasso, uh, a string that you can pull and then the stent will come Come back a little bit. You can yeah, adjust the, it. The problem is I can't even get down to the end mm -hmm. here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm out of scope. Uh, the stomach is, is uh, very distended. Uh, so I run out of scope. Uh, and there's just a puckering of tissue. Uh, so I can't even see the end of the stent, let alone see well enough to, to organize a, uh, you know, if there is indeed a string. So I think uh, what I've got to try to do is use fluoroscopy uh, maybe I need to uh, use a different instrument other than the... Maybe uh, some external pressure on the stomach to reduce the greater curve loop for you. Maybe that, would that help? Uh, that, that might help. Um, or a pediatric colonoscope. But part of it, uh, you can see here on the fluoro, uh, getting to the... Yep, yeah, you're getting there. Uh, to the end... Um, Ah, now that felt good. Oh, hang on, very hang nice. On, hang on, hang on. Oh, oh no, good, no good, no good, no good. Out, outside. Oh, out the side. So pull back. Okay. Okay. Inject some contrast now, if you can. Okay. Contrast flow food. Okay. So oh, oh, hold, hold still. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay, try to... Yeah. Ah. Good. I think so, yes. Sydney. <laughs> Good. You think? Yeah. <laughs> You're the man. Okay. Great. Okay, so we're in now. Um, I'll get the guide wire in deeply. We'll get the four centimeter long stand if we can. All right. The shortest is eight. Ah, okay, okay, well, whatever. Well, you can eight have more overlap. Oh, eight, eight is, is okay. probably okay. Longer yeah. is okay. Yeah, long doesn't hurt me. Okay, so we need to do an exchange now. Are you ready? Okay, wire in. I think the difficulty would be uh, you might ha you have to pull back your scope. Yes. To have I a did. stable position. Yep. 
instead of uh, uh, this position. Yeah. So I think a couple of take-home messages. Um, you know, I, I think I'm unfamiliar with the stent. Uh, I think that's number one. Number two, probably we've got her, the patient actually on her, on her back now, and she's stable uh, from what I understand, and, and probably we should have insisted on that to get a better uh, view of, uh, you know, of, the, uh, of the anatomy and, and the curves and so forth. I think I tried to get an optimal position so you all could see uh, the lumen. And I think in doing so, the scope actually went in. Uh, and so I was closer to the tumor than I, uh, than I, than I ideally wanted to be. Uh, in fairness to Anthony, he kept telling me to stay back, stay back, stay back. And um, I obviously failed him. So um, anyway, I, I think this will uh, recover uh, the situation fine. I, 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 I think we will uh, still come out fine. We've used uh, some more resources than we should have, but uh, it still will, will be okay. Okay, so uh, here fluoroscopically, I think we're in uh, reasonable shape. Uh, endoscopically, we're in regional, reasonable shape. So I'm going to go ahead and ask to uh, begin deploying. Deploy. So again, step by step. Um, Okay, step by step, perfect, perfect, continue, excellent, excellent. Okay. Okay, yes. All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. So there we are, um, and you can see the proximal phalange is, I think, nicely open now. So um, hopefully it will not migrate and uh, she'll get palliation. Uh, for her uh, gastric outlet obstruction. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, James. Nice one. Very nice.